We are confronted by the degradation of our country, brought on by the fierce struggle for existence of the human race. It is the consequence of the ignorance and unconsciousness of starving, shivering, sick humanity that, to save its children, instinctively snatches at everything that can warm it and steal its hunger. So it destroys everything it can lay its hands on without a thought for the morrow. And almost everything has gone, and nothing has been created to take its place. The human fight for survival always led to the exploitation of natural resources. Sometimes this exploitation resulted in progress. Sometimes it turned back and beat human race hard, like disappearance of Mesopotamian Sumerian civilization due to the overexploitation of soils by irrigation, or much smaller disaster in the town Eberfan in England in 1966 when coal debris from mining operation buried 144 people, 116 of them children. Do we remember our lessons? Do we learn from them? How many of human tragedies do we need to realize that we have to be responsible for our decisions and also be responsible for the next generations to come? This story is yet another page in the book of human aspirations, ruined by human negligence and incompetence. Behind the ridges of Pennsylvania landscape lays treasure that influenced the development of human race in the course of 19th and 20th centuries, provided warmth and energy, provoked greed and jealousy, political battles and environmental concerns. This treasure is coal. Safety in coal mines is a matter of engineering and has to be taken seriously to avoid disasters. But this, this determines the leg, this the collar, and you'll take notice how the notches are here. You see how this is set to bite into the face of this leg? That's to give it its total maximum strength. Timber is just to hold any kind of loose materials like you see up here. Timber is just a warning device. If you start getting pressure and you start getting cracked timber or, or bowing timber, then you know you've got a problem, you've got pressure, you've got to get some extra sets in or whatever. It's just a warning device. Our anthracite law is written in blood. And it's, it's basically all common sense. Uh, and we do have a separate anthracite law, we have a separate bituminous law. In mines, Miners have to use all senses, hearing and vision, but hearing is very important. The reason why your hearing is so important is that, uh, as you can, you know, just one person shine their light over through. You know, as far as seeing, you only see what that light showing you there. But uh, you hear, <laughs> well, I can hear more drilling is, mm -hmm. About 100 feet away from us. And uh, you can hear that coal coming down. You know, that's just little peak coal. You can see there's no big lumps at all. But if you hear coal coming down like that and nobody's working, you know, he might be up there kicking coal down. 
but if it's the rib letting loose, you know there's problems. You, know, you always, you actually see stuff with your ears, you know, you hear it first, then you look. The coal production in Pennsylvania is a historic business that developed in 18th century with arrival of immigrants from all over the world, mainly Ireland, England, Germany, Poland and Ukraine. The small town of Centralia has its roots in Bargain, concluded in 1749, when local Indian tribes sold lands in northeastern Pennsylvania to new settlers for 500 pounds. But not until 1854, when the mine run railroad was built, the commercial coal mining started. The Centralia miners, who came in the middle of 19th century, brought with them hopes and aspirations to prosper, to survive and provide better future for their children. The only way they could do this, through the coal mining. The memory about these people lies in Centralia cemeteries, where English inscriptions in tombstones in one cemetery change into Ukrainian inscriptions in another. These people are alive as long as we remember them, their hopes, their hard work and their death from tough and dirty mining work. Despite the famous mine strikes in 1902 and 1903, led by John Mitchell, stock market crash in 1920s, World War I and II, Centralia survived as a town and diverse community of German, Polish and Ukrainian descendants. My grandparents came here because they were immigrants, my dad from Poland, my grandfather from Poland, my grandmother from Udessa, uh, Odessa. And they had heard, my dad says, my, de my grandfather had heard that there was good work here, big bucks working in the coal mines. And fresh off the boat from wherever he was from in Poland, he thought this would be a good place to make some money. So he came here. And after World War II, he gets out and he comes back to the coal region. And he stays here for maybe like a year or so. And it's right after the war, and I guess he didn't really find any work that he was really happy with. And he goes back into the service, back into the Air Force. In 1962, the quiet town of Centralia experienced what turned out to be a nightmare for years to come. An underground fire caused by burning trash in the dumping site near one of the Centralia cemeteries called Ad Fellows Cemetery. 